What if I told you that scheduling sex is one of the best things that you can do for your relationship? It's true, and I'm going to be talking about it in today's video. As a sex therapist, I am frequently telling my clients to schedule sex. Sometimes they look at me a little side-eyed and wonder, why would she say that? That is so unromantic. Sex should be spontaneous. I actually talked about this in another video. Go check it out about lies that were told about relationships. Well, sex should be spontaneous is a big one. And actually, sex is much more exciting when it's planned. And I'm going to tell you why. If you're finding this information useful, please subscribe to the channel and like the video. I would so appreciate it. Thank you. You might be in a relationship when you are the one who has more desire than your partner. If that's the case, I know you know what it's like to feel rejected or to be afraid to initiate. It doesn't feel good being told no over and over and over again. And when we are rejected over and over and over again, we stop asking, we stop initiating. It doesn't feel good to be rejected. It's easier just to wait for the partner to initiate or not to even try at all. And that is a problem because it doesn't have to be that way. And when you know, or when you can count on having sex, which you can do if you have sex dates, that goes out the window. You don't have to worry. Who's going to initiate? Am I going to be rejected? Now, if you are the one who has lower desire than your partner, it's the same thing in a sense that you are frequently wondering, does he or she want sex? It's been a while. You start to feel guilty. You start to feel that pressure like, oh, I should. It probably should be time. It's been kind of a while. I should do it now. If your partner looks at you or touches you, which they may not even do, but if they do, you might be thinking, oh, my partner wants sex. And so you either say no, which doesn't feel good because you're rejecting them, that doesn't feel good, or you say yes, but you don't really want sex. And you have what I call duty sex or obligatory sex. One of the worst things you can do, why? Because when you are having obligatory or duty sex, sex that you don't really wanna have, guess what happens? It's not very good. It's not good for you and it's also not good for your partner. And you do that long enough and you are really not gonna wanna have sex. So that's when sex starts to become infrequent or even non-existent. We know there are many sexless relationships and there's no need for that if you catch it in time. It's the patterns that have gone on for so long that create the problems. And I don't want you to have those problems. That's why I'm making this video. And I just want you to try it. I'm gonna talk about some ways to do it so it can be fun, because it actually can be fun. So, first of all, you think that spontaneous sex is fun, and it is. I mean, spontaneous sex can be great when you have two partners who are just wanting to have sex. They're, they're feeling horny, they're both in the mood, and it just feels fantastic. The moment strikes, well, how often does that actually happen? Especially when you've been married for a while, you have kids, you're tired, you have responsibilities. It's probably not gonna happen. Or if it does, it's not gonna happen enough. So while it can be nice, and there is always room for spontaneity, just because you're scheduling sex, doesn't mean that you're not gonna ever have spontaneous sex. And when you're planning sex, you can actually have some spontaneity in the planning. Here's what I mean by that. So you know that you are gonna have sex on Sunday afternoon. Sunday afternoon is the time you picked. Why? It's the perfect time. Sunday night, too late. You're gonna be thinking about work and Monday morning. So oftentimes nighttime is when we do have sex and it's really not the best time for most of us. We're tired. So sometimes it's the only time because we have kids. But you know, if you get creative and you're planning it, you get to plan it at a time that's gonna work for you. Another advantage of planning it. Maybe it's sneaking off in the afternoon, having a little nooner. Maybe it's in the morning, waking up early before the kids get up. If you don't have kids, it's a little easier, a lot easier actually. But planning it can be fun and exciting and it's going to be a better experience because you're creating it at a time that's going to work better. Okay, so you have scheduled your sex. You know that your sex date or your sexy time, as a lot of my clients like to call it, is Sunday afternoon, two o'clock to be exact. And at two o'clock, what do you do? Here's where the spontaneity can come in. 
You could do all kinds of things. You could have outer course. Check out my video on outer course. You could have a makeout session. You could take turns pleasing each other orally. You could have a little role play, a little fun. There's so many things that you can do. You can even go to a hotel. You could even have sex in your car. There's so many things that you can do and talking about that during the week or planning it might be part of the fun. So what do you feel like doing? What do you think about acting out that fantasy that we've been talking about? Or you know, there is something that I've been thinking about that I've been wanting to do for a long time but I didn't really know how or when to bring it up. So when you're planning sex, you know when it's going to happen, you can count on that because you do need to count on it. One of the rules is that when you have this on the calendar, it's a commitment. You are sticking to it. Both of you can count on that time. Now, if you're the lower desired partner, here's the good news. You don't have to be in the mood to have sex because if you wait till you're in the mood, you're never gonna have sex. But because you know you're gonna have sex, there are things that you can do to get yourself in the mood. Maybe it's taking a bath. Maybe it's listening to music. Maybe it's spending the day with your partner. Maybe it is reading a little erotica or watching a little bit of porn. Maybe it's even a little self-pleasuring. Whatever it's going to take to get you in the mood, dressing a certain way, brushing your teeth, it could be anything. But when you know you're gonna have sex, you get to plan for it. And that is a good thing. And if you're the higher desire partner, you don't have to wonder, oh, if I touch her, is she going to reject me? No, you get to have that time to be together, to have fun together. And that's what it's about. It's not about we're going to have intercourse. It's not about we're going to have orgasms. It is we are creating this space and time for our pleasure, to give and receive pleasure. And we are committing to this because we love each other. And this is important. You're important. Our relationship is important and being intimate and giving you sexual pleasure is also important that is a really important message to give as opposed to wondering when are we gonna have it should we have it why haven't we had it how long has it been oh I don't know if, if I should and when should I initiate oh if she's probably gonna turn me down he might say no all of these things that we tell ourselves and the anxiety and the disappointment and the anger sometimes that gets created when we're waiting for sex to happen spontaneously, it is a huge problem. And putting sex on the calendar, calendar sex, sex dates, sexy time, whatever you want to call it, it is actually one of the best things you can do for your sex life. Just planning a vacation or planning where you're going to go out on your, on your date night or when you're going out to dinner, does planning it make it any less enjoyable? You get to think about where you want to go what you're gonna wear, the things you wanna see, the things you wanna do, the things you're gonna eat, and planning it and anticipating it makes it that much more fun. Now, it doesn't mean there won't be some things that can happen spontaneously. Maybe you'll get to the restaurant if you're planning your dinner and you might choose to order something that you didn't think about. Or if you're planning your vacation, maybe you chose to go visit certain places, but maybe last minute you decide you're gonna go visit something else or you decide you're gonna sleep in. So there is spontaneity in the planning, but the planning is important. Again, the committing to it is one of the most important things. You put it on the calendar and you both commit to it. You understand the things that you're going to do leading up to it. Maybe a little teasing, a little texting or sexting before. Can't wait till Sunday afternoon. Oh, wait till you see what I'm going to do to you Sunday afternoon. I've been thinking about Sunday afternoon. All of those things that can make it so much fun. And it'll just really bring some more excitement into your relationship and also into your sex life. So go to the calendar, schedule those sex dates. I'm going to say at least once a week, maybe twice a week, no more. Have you tried sex dates? Just put a yes or a no in the comments. I really would love to hear. And please do not forget to subscribe to the channel. I so appreciate you watching and I will talk to you soon.